Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to attend my uh, proposal seminar. The title of my PhD uh, proposal is Ecosystem Services and the Livelihood uh, Nexus in Ethiopian Protected Areas. Just in order to uh, value, uh, value the uh, protected areas, which is used for, uh, which will be used for natural resource conservation. My supervisors. Okay, okay. So, my supervisors are uh, Dr. Maxim Poliako and Dr. Ram Pandits. For the coming 15 minutes, I will be talking about uh, the background of the problem, then go to the aim and the objectives, and a little bit discuss about what kind of methods I will be using. Then at the end, I will talk about the significance of the study. So, when I start from the background, those of you who are interested to know where Ethiopia is, Ethiopia is located in the Horn of Africa, in the East Africa. It is the uh, oldest independent African nation where the area is more than one million square kilometer and we are the second populous country in Africa. According to the World Bank estimate in 2012, the population was about 84 million. Of course, 86% of the population is living in the rural areas. So economically, Ethiopia is low income country where the poverty low uh, rate is just nearly 30%. So when we see the economic, the economy of the Ethiopia, Ethiopia uh, basically agriculture is the backbone of the economy, and it is based on smallholder subsistence, which is rainfall dependent, and it forms about 83 percent of the employment for the whole population, and 90 percent of the country's export, mainly which is coming from coffee and other cash crops and the contribution to total GDP is much significant, which is more than 40%. Of course, the production of agriculture, the productivity of agriculture is very low, and it is poor. As a result of this, local population are still dependent on natural resources just to support their livelihood. When we see biodiversity, which is part of the natural resource, uh, Ethiopia is having a range of ecological zones below 110 meters below sea level to 4,600 uh, meters above sea level. Because of this range, we, there is a rich in biodiversity, and we have 60,000 uh, higher plant species, about 284 animal mammal species, and more than 800 bird species, where, of course, because of human activity, uh, there are significant number of threatened species, where mammals are the most threatened, followed by plants and birds. When we see the wildlife conservation history in Ethiopia, uh, it started in 1901 formally, in 1909 formally, in order to control hunting and followed by the uh, establishment of Ethiopian Wildlife Conservation Organization in order to establish protected areas and manage those protected areas. Of course, when we see the uh, kind of management, there is a strict regulation by the government so no one is allowed to extract or use resources inside protected areas or inside the conservation uh, areas. But this management still does not include local communities' participation, and they are not part of the, con the management uh, process. As a result, there is an open access because of strictness of the management system. 
Basically, the institution, uh, the uh, management system is poor because of lack of funding, lack of the experts, staff, and the like. And because of this, they cannot manage to control each and every part. I say that local people are everywhere for, uh, in order to, uh, for agriculture, for settlement, and for other purposes. So, in principle, ecotourism is allowed. When we see the coverage of protected areas, more than 16% of the total land area is under the protection, where we have 41 protected areas under the uh, IUCN category, where national parks and wildlife sanctuaries belong to category two, which form only 2.2% of the total land area. Uh, the wildlife reserves, about 2%, belong to the category four, and the control hunting areas, which form the largest proportion, are forming the, uh, are under category six. So government is still planning to protect more areas, even if the protection is just not as effective as it is intended to be. So uh, local people are still claiming that the area is their own, so the land is becoming protected area after uh, their uh, settlement. So because of this, there are challenges. So the biggest challenge comes from human population increase. Uh, for the last 30 years, the population has doubled from 42 million to 84 million. And this uh, has increased the demand for livelihood. For example, the need for land, for agriculture, for grazing, and extraction of forest products, for mainly for uh, biomass, energy, firewood, and charcoal wood. When we see some of the statistics, the dependence of householders on energy source is really significant. So nationally, the population is dependent on firewood in order to cook food. So this shows that there is much pressure on protected areas. So the deforestation is very high. There is only 3.4% of the forest, I mean 3.4% uh, forest cover. So because of the resource use for protection as well as for um, local use, there is conflict. And this conflict leads to change in land use pattern. That is basically the protected areas are converted to other form of land use where people are there for agriculture and for grazing. And that leads to degradation and habitat loss, where in some protected areas, even you have only the fenced area, which is still looks protected, but nearby adjacent to the area, which is in the contrary, it is highly degraded. So this forced wild animals, wildlife, to leave their uh, territory. Even some uh, endemic animals are threatened and their population is significantly declined and they are categorized under the endangered list. Some of them are uh, critically endangered. So, for example, the Ethiopian wolf is the endemic one. Its population is now less than 450. So, even there is impact on human livelihood where there is decrease in the supply of ecosystem service. Basically, the woman should go a long distance in order to harvest firewood nowadays because of the uh, extensive deforestation problem. So considering all these situations, nowadays the government is the government in, uh, in cooperation with the United Nations and Development Program, uh, supported by the Global Air Environment Facility, they develop a project on sustainable development of protected area systems in Ethiopia that recognizes the vital role of uh, poverty uh, protected areas on poverty elevation as well as in collaborate to participate local community in the conservation. So, so generally, an assess the assessment shows that local people are positive towards protected areas as well as towards, towards wildlife. However, Resource use, resource use restrictions imposed on them becomes an economic burden that ignores their livelihood. So usually they are struggling to meet their livelihood. Uh, 
so in the management, as the livelihood contribution of the proteins is not considered. So uh, there is lack of information on economic values. There are values for carbon sequestration. There are values for watershed uh, protection. There are values for uh, other aspects, but there is no value given to local uh, communities' uh, livelihood with respect to the benefit from the protected areas. Therefore, this project aims to, aims to assess the social economic values of protected areas, uh, ecosystem services, uh, with particular emphasis on strictly managed protected areas. When we say strictly managed protected areas, this, are, this is in principle because uh, the reality is not uh, that. So the objectives are to investigate the socioeconomic determinants that affect ecosystem uses, uh, ecosystem service uses from the protected areas, to estimate the impact of protected areas on households' income, and to estimate the preservation values of endangered wildlife. Uh, resources. So for this, I will be using the conceptual framework which links protected areas to human well-being. Basically, protected areas provide ecosystem service, and these ecosystem services contribute to livelihood where they have preservation values uh, as well. So, but this is not going to be simply a linear relationship, but there are problems associated with this one. So these problems mainly are, which arise from socioeconomic and demo uh, demographic factors, affect both protected areas and uh, ecosystem services. Therefore, there should be a certain kind of management that should balance the uh, human well-being as well as protected areas, I mean, conservation of protected areas. So for this, I selected four protected areas uh, in the central part of Ethiopia, the Bali Mountain National Park, here, and the Abijata Sharalek National Park here, then one sanctuary here, and there is Awash National Park here. So I'm sorry this picture is not clear, but I wanted to show you the location with respect to the capital of Ethiopia, which is Addis Ababa. So this, here is Addis Ababa, so the, the study areas are, this is 400 kilometers from the study area, and these are almost 260, and this is about 215 kilometers. So these are selected study areas in order to address the uh, problem, the, uh, in order to meet the objective. So basically the data collection will be based on uh, primary data uh, collection uh, methods. That will be household survey, where 600 households will be randomly selected from inside, adjacent, and outside protected areas, where questions will include ecosystem service use, and, of course, households will be asked in order to value the preservation value of the protected areas, uh, particularly the uh, endangered species. So visitors will be also the target of the survey, where 250 uh, randomly selected respondents from each protected area will be uh, the source of uh, information, and face-to-face -face interview will be the means of data collection. So when we see the, uh, how to analyze this data with respect to the uh, objectives. Basically, uh, for the first objective, which is about identification of the socioeconomic determinants, firewood contribution to householders' income, annual income, uh, will be the, uh, use, uh, will be the uh, dependent uh, variable where the logistic regression will be used in order to analyze the data. And for, in order to estimate the impact of protected areas, we will use propensity score matching and, of course, post-matching regression. In order to estimate the preservation value of endangered species, we will use, uh, I will use the contingent valuation method based on the double-bounded dichotomous choice survey. And the model will be estimated using the logistic regression. So basically, uh, this study will contribute to provide a certain framework in order to understand how protected areas contribute to householders, especially within the context of the subsistence agricultural-led uh, economy. Then it will also help to inform some policy, uh, policy makers about the preference of local community with respect to biodiversity protection in terms of the value they give 
in terms of the price they are tied to the service. And overall, it is important to contribute uh, in designing proper and effective protect area management that recounts both conservation and livelihood contribution to local community. So having said this, I would like to acknowledge the Australian government for providing me scholarship, particularly the, uh, in the uh, IPRS program. So without IPRS program, I wouldn't be here. And I would like to acknowledge School of Agriculture and Resource Economics for supporting for every support and my supervisors, of course. And I would like to acknowledge as well the CED project for providing for support, financial support to conduct my field work.